session 17 of the Book of Numbers. And what is it that we are learning from ancient history? What is the eternally applicable lessons that Yahuwah is trying to teach us by telling us these stories that happened in the times of Moses, in the Torah, in the first five books that Moses wrote? What is it that Yahshua is trying to teach us from this? Because Yahshua said over and over again, all over the Old Testament, and Paul and Peter and John, and they all confirmed it, that the law and the prophets all testifies of Yahshua. So we need to understand the, the big lessons. And for me, the greatest lesson in all of this that we have studied together, but especially Numbers 14, is in these times where we are, we, we are also standing at the brink of the land of Canaan. And this land is huge, but it's got lots and lots of enemies. We've dealt with the enemies. You know the enemies in your own life. You know the enemies in this world. You know the enemies that is in the air, the spiritual enemies that is behind the physical enemies. You know all the enemies of God. And, and we are also, just like Israel then, we are standing as a congregation at the brink of getting ourselves prepared to face the giants, to face these enemies. And we need to learn from the mistakes of the past so that we don't repeat it. And for me, the biggest thing is, is that we should listen to Moses. Because Yahuwah speaks all his instructions through Moses, all the way even to us today. Yahshua is the word that Yahuwah is speaking and that is giving to Moses to give to us. So we need to listen to Moses. We need to read and understand these five books and understand the depth of the prophecy of the kingdom of God since we lost it in Genesis 3. And since Abram, Isaac and Jacob came out of that deception and they learned the truth and they became Ivrit, Hebrew, crossed over. And Jacob was changed to Israel. That is who we are, the seed of Abraham, overcoming the enemies with Al, Israel. So Moses is our leader through our wilderness journey as well. Listen to Moses. But not only listening to Moses, but listen to Judah. Because remember Caleb, who had another spirit in him? He was from the tribe of Judah. And I remind you, this has got nothing to do with the Jewish people today. Many normal, good, Torah-loving Jewish men and women follow the, the God of Abraham with all their heart. But the Jewish system, the Kabbalah and the Talmud and the Zohar, and those that, according to the book of Revelation, say they are Jews, but they are not. They're actually working for the synagogue of Satan. I'm not talking about the Kabbalah Jewish system, the banking system, the elite system, the Illuminati system. And I'm also not saying that we must follow the Jewish um, Talmudic rabbis of today that say you can't walk more than 70 steps on a Sabbath or you can't even eat an egg that was laid on the Sabbath and you can't even put out your hand out of your window to give a beggar some bread when he comes knocking on your door on a Sabbath. I'm talking about the tribe of Judah, the house of Judah, our older brother who stayed behind in the house when we, Ephraim, the younger brother, left the house. We need to listen to Judah because when Jacob um, blessed Judah, he said, the lawgiver will never depart from your feet until Shiloh comes, until the Prince of Peace comes. So what we learn about the Torah from the house of Judah is who we have to listen to. At the brink of Canaan, the people didn't listen to Moses. They didn't listen to Caleb, who was the leader of Judah. And that's teaching us a lesson that we must start listening to our older brother, the one that loves Yahuwah, the one that is the tribe of Judah, the house of Judah, with whom we are grafted into the olive tree, Romans 11. Although they are blinded with their, I don't know, rabbinical Judaism, 
there's a difference between a Jew from the tribe of Judah who loves Torah and Judaism. So I hope you understand when I say tribe of Judah, I mean our older brother. I don't mean the Babylonian Pharisee Judaism that Yeshua was so much against. Israel didn't listen to Caleb. We must listen to Caleb. There was another spirit in him, and he trusted God here at the brink of the enemies. And we need to learn the lesson from the old Israel because they rebelled. And the Bible says they wanted to stone Caleb and Joshua. They wanted to throw them with stones and kill them. We mustn't kill them. We mustn't throw stones. We must listen and learn so that we can be prepared for this war that is lying ahead. We have to witness. We as Ephraim, we have to witness. And people from Ephraim, according to Deuteronomy 4, that was scattered but regathered here in the end of times by the hand of the Messiah because we are obeying and listening to the voice of God. We are witnessing about how we must prepare to face these enemies. Joshua was from the tribe of Ephraim. So we listen to Moses, we listen to Caleb, and we listen to Joshua from the tribe of Ephraim, witnessing together with Caleb that it's a good land. We, we cannot be afraid of the enemies. We cannot be rebellious against the commandment of God. We have to stand together on his promises that he made so many years ago to Abraham, that Abraham's seed will indeed inherit this land and will indeed enter into the Sabbath rest. We have to trust God together with Joshua and Caleb and Moses. And not only do we listen to the witnessing, Judah always represents the law and the prophets, um, in my eyes, is the witnesses, the people that are witnessing about Yeshua. And we as Ephraim, here at the brink of Canaan, through Joshua, who was the leader of Ephraim, we have to witness about the strength of our God, who has a sword in his right hand, and who will not allow the dark kingdom to take over his people. And we need to trust him to go even through the valley of the shadow of death, because his rod and his staff is still with us. Listen to Moses, Caleb, and Joshua. Listen to the law and the prophets. Listen to the law and the testimony of Yeshua. Because that is what the book of Revelation says in Revelation 12, 17 and 14 verse 12 and Revelation 22, 14. The law and the prophets is our witness and our strength. That is why Ephesians 6 says that we must prepare ourselves for the battle. The sword of the spirit which is the law of God, the word of God, must be in our hand. That two-edged sword at the entrance of the garden, that two-edged sword that can distinguish between soul and spirit and bone and marrow and uh, the intentions of the heart, that sword that is Yeshua himself must be in our hands. Now when I read Ephesians 6, um, it just makes so much more sense for, for me. And I'll go through Ephesians 6 with you now. But let us learn the lesson and listen to Moses, listen to Judah, and listen to the witnessing of Ephraim. Trust God even when your eyes see the huge enemy and see the giants and your ears hear everything that they are saying. And even in your own mind, you like a grasshopper against them. Don't listen to the enemy. Listen to Moses, Judah and Ephraim. Listen to Joshua and Caleb. Listen to the Ruach inside that makes you say that you are an overcomer with El, Israel. You can overcome anything by the power of Messiah. Listen to them. Repeat the words they spoke. Don't repeat the words that the fearful within the camp of Israel spoke. Oh, our children is going to be sacrificed. Oh, we are too scared. Oh, they are too big for us. No, let's just run away back to Egypt. No, no, no. Don't listen to those words. But let your ears be circumcised to hear by that same sword, to hear the, the word of God. Even if your eyes can see that these enemies are giants, 
It doesn't matter. We walk by faith, not by sight. So let's endure all the way to the end. Joshua and Caleb was willing to endure, willing to lay down their lives, willing to fight the enemies. I mean, 40 years later, it's so beautiful for me. After they wandered in the desert for 40 years, 40 years later, Caleb was 80 years old and he said to Joshua, Remember when I was 40, Moses said he will give me this and this portion of the land. Well, it's now 40 years later and I'm 80 years old, but I'm still as strong and I'm still as ready now that I was then when I was 40 years old to fight this specific uh, portion of the land. And the specific portion of the land that was given to Caleb was actually where the giants lived. And Caleb said, I'm not scared. I will go and fight the giants. Give me that portion of land. Remember, remember Yahshua, Yahuwah said in Numbers 14 verse 20, uh, 21, But as truly as I live, all the land shall be filled with the glory of Yahuwah. And here I just want to take you to Psalm 137 verse 5. Because here, this is the song that Israel was singing while they were in exile in Babylon. And we are still in exile in Babylon as well. And we sing this very same song. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yeah, we wept when we remembered Zion. Zion, the land of God. Jerusalem, the city of God. We are weeping and crying and our hearts are breaking because we want to see the glory of God in his land that he promised. But due to our unbelief and disobedience, we have lost that privilege. So now we learn from Psalm 137 as well. And let us understand that the glory of God is going to fill this land yet again. And we need to fight for our land. We need to fight for the covenant promise that we will inherit this land. Um, I'm going to continue. I'm going to try and sing. Just don't you know, stress about my singing. Um, Psalm 137 verse 3. For there they carried us away captivity, requiring of us a song. How can we sing a love song in a strange land? So that song you can surely remember. It's sang by, uh, no, I can't remember the group's name. But anyway, so, but look specifically at verse 5. If I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget how to work. Because the glory of Yahuwah is going to fill the land, especially Jerusalem. We have to leave Egypt behind, follow Caleb, Joshua, Moses, Yeshua into the promised land. And while we are not there yet, while the enemy enemies is standing as giants trying to keep us away and trying to steer us in another direction, maybe even force us to go back to Egypt, we must stand there and remember this is the land. This is the city where Yahuwah called his name. Yerushalayim, Yahuwah Shalom. This is um, Shalem, where Melchizedek was the king and the priest of. This is where Jacob laid down and had his dream of the ladder between heaven and earth. And this is where we are going back to. This is the strength of the sword of the spirit, the word of God, to be found in our mouths, in our hearts and in our hands that will keep us enduring through difficult times because we trust God when he said, the enemies will not overpower you. You will inherit the land. Even if we have to go through a bit of a war, even if we have to go through the tribulation and stand as a few people not taking the mark of the beast, we will not be overcome. Psalm 91, those who love the name of Yahuwah, the pest will not come. Maybe 10,000 will fall on your right hand side and a thousand on your left hand side, but it will not come to you. The pest and the curse of Genesis 3 that will cause your eternal death that will not come to you when the Torah is in your hand, in your mouth, and written upon your heart.
because we are the people according to the prophecies hundreds of prophecies all over the bible that says those people who shema those people who listen to god and return to him and repent of their sin they are the ones that will have this different spirit that was in caleb that different spirit will be found inside all of us who are circumcised from the heart and eventually when you learn the torah you can get circumcised by the flesh if you're male i'm taking you to ezekiel 36 from verse 24 for i will take you from among the heathen and i will gather you out of all the countries and i will bring you back into your own land by the rivers of babylon we want to return to the land of god we don't want to stay in babylon not now <laughs> i'm not talking about you know by now i'm not talking about physical jerusalem as it is now because according to so many prophecies and maybe i'm wrong the third world war is going to start in the middle east and unfortunately the temple is going to be desecrated and the abomination of desolation is going to sit there also in us we as the temple but also in the physical so we are looking like abraham the bible says in um, hebrews 11 abraham was looking towards the city that wasn't built with hands but the city of god we have that same desire in us because God promises. Remember, we need to be the same people that's gathered by the hand of God. Just as Caleb, who wasn't a Hebrew, remember, he was his father was a Hesitite or something. He was gathered by the hand, the right hand of God out of Egypt. He became part of Israel and he got a, a different spirit inside of him. And Ezekiel 36 explains to us what that is. God himself will gather us from the heathen people and out of all the countries and bring us to our land, our land that, that according to the testament and the covenant we are inheriting together with Abram, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, David, Solomon, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, everyone. God continues and say in verse 25, Then I will sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean. You shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols. I will cleanse you as we are gathered from the pagan religions. And we understand how the idolatry of the sun god false system has defiled us and made us filthy. So we repent. These people with a different spirit inside of them. So we repent. We get forgiveness under the Pesach lamb's blood. He washes us clean and he brings us out of the length and the width and the breadth of this earth together in his hand. That's what Ezekiel 37 is all about. For the Messiah to gather the two um, um, sticks and make them one again in his hand. But now the, the most important verse, because we need to listen to Caleb. He had a different spirit in him. But we also need to be like Caleb with a different spirit in us. And when we allow God to gather us back like lost sheep from the house of Israel and cleanse us from our idolatry, then he does the next thing. What is it that he does? Take your pen, underline this. Ezekiel 36 verse 26. A new heart also will i give you and a new spirit will i put within you i will take away your stony heart and i will give you a heart of flesh and i will put my spirit inside of you now this is important because unfortunately the religious system teaches we are now under the law of the spirit we are no longer under the law of Moses I have a little bit of a shocking surprise to them because that is is so far from the truth it's not me that says that it, it's God Almighty himself look at verse 27 this spirit that he puts within us 
after he has given us a new heart. You want to know what it means to be a reborn Christian? I'm a reborn Christian, really. Do you have a new heart? Do you have a new spirit inside of you? Because if you do, read verse 27. What will that spirit cause you to do? Can you see it? When I put my spirit, God says, when he puts his spirit, that is the Holy Spirit inside of us. It will, verse 27, cause you to walk in my Torah and to keep my judgments and to do my law. This is the spirit that he puts inside of us so that we don't have a spirit of fear, but we also don't have a spirit of lawlessness or rebellion or unbelief. But when we have this regathering by the hand of the good shepherd and we have the sprinkling of water and we have the new heart and we have God's spirit inside of us and we start walking in his commandments and obeying his Torah, then what will happen? Verse 28. Then you shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers. And you shall be my people and I will be your God. That is the promise that we have, that we can stand on, that we can believe and have faith in as we face the giants. As we stand at the brink of Canaan and we are scared of these giants and our brothers that, that is enemy and the people that are trampling upon us and the government systems that is strangling us with fear. This is our promise. We must listen to Moses, obey the Torah, receive this new spirit that will circumcise our hearts and then we will be the people of God. He will be our God and he will give us the land that he has promised to Abram, Isaac and Jacob and to you and me. All well, your church can turn around and say, oh well, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit of the Old Testament is different than the Holy Spirit of the New Testament. Again, maybe they must start reading the Bible because the New Testament says, Acts 5 verse 31 God has exalted with his right hand Yeshua to be a prince and a savior, to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins, just as we read in Ezekiel 36. And Acts continues, um, Peter continues and uh, say, um, We are his witnesses in these things. And so also is the Ruach HaKodesh, a witness to Yeshua being Prince and Savior, right? Because God has given his Ruach HaKodesh to those that obey him. So both Old and New Testament says that the spirit that God puts inside of us will cause us to obey him. That is the different spirit that Caleb had inside of him. And that me and you should have inside of us. Because this is the Ruach HaKodesh that we are going to need in the last days. Why? 1 Timothy 1 verse 7 For Yahuwah has not given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power. Stand with a sword in your hand. Powerful. A spirit of love. If you love me, obey my commandments. And a spirit of a sound mind. Don't let the enemy strangle you with fear. Keep a sound mind. Because he continues in verse 8. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our master. But be thou partakers in the afflictions of the gospel. So maybe we will face a bit of persecution and affliction. Maybe the giants, you know, will be strong. <coughs> but let us not be afraid. Let us be partakers with power and love and a sound mind. Let us not listen to the enemy or to the people inside of the camp of Israel. Or to the ten spies, the ten leaders that's coming back to make us scared. 
But let's listen to Moses, Joshua and Caleb. And let's be strong with the Spirit of God that He puts inside of our new hearts so that we can go ahead with Ephesians 6, the armor of God fighting against this powers and principalities that is in charge of this new world order. And maybe that will mean you will fight on your knees and you will pray and you will repent. Join us for Yom Kippur. It's, it's lying ahead now in, uh, in uh, September 2021. Join us for Yom Kippur. Come and repent and pray with us and fight in the spirit so that we can stand firm and stand fast with a belt of truth and the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness and the willingness to preach the gospel as shoes on our feet and the um, sword of God, um, the, the ruach, the sword of the Ruach in our hand, which is the word of God, so that we are not afraid for these enemies. <laughs>